Hey everybody. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to be. I may have to cut it, but let's just see how long I go. I don't even know if I'm going to post this. So if it goes up, fine. If not, I'm going to have to think of something else. <laughs> happy, happy Friday, everybody. Um, it's a beautiful day. It's very hot and very humid. I decided to stay home. It is 1230. So I didn't go anywhere. Right now, what I'm doing is trying to organize. I have a big, um, I can't even lift it. I have a big zippered plastic bag filled with my life and memories. <laughs> As I found many things of my life and memories, but I wanted to organize. And the thing is, is that when I had, let me just step over here. When I had my three drawer little plastic Sterilite dresser, I saved the drawers to them because I knew that I was going to take them and put something else in. Well, this is the last drawer. The other two drawers that I have have like some of my husband's shirts um, that don't fit in a drawer. I have those on top of the dresser. So this is a nice storage thing to store them nicely. Okay. So this is the third and final drawer that I have. So what I'm doing is I am actually, they're not going in order, but I went to go through my concert programs. Now, you guys know I went to a lot of concerts. Again, this is not a Disney thing. This is my regular, regular life, you know. We do have, I do have, should I say, another life besides Disney. I mean, I can't do that all the time. So I do have my life. And I'm just sitting here going through my concert programs. And oh my God, I have a lot. This is my very first one. This was my first concert, which was Hall of Notes, 1984. Madison Square Garden and my now husband who was my boyfriend back then um, knew that I never went to a concert before and I think I told you this story before he went down on a train because we lived in Midtown Manhattan he went down on a train to Madison Square Garden to pick up two tickets in a snowstorm and then came home and he surprised me with the two tickets so we wound up going and this is the concert program from that you know great memories all my all my programs are in pristine condition now along with these concert programs which is something that I had to sacrifice and let go I should have never did it but I had to do it because I was number one a little under pressure and number two you just think of so many things when I had stuff in storage after um my mom passed away I put my stuff in storage and I had a big, gigantic Rubbermaid, I mean a big Rubbermaid storage container full of the concert shirts that go with these concerts. Some of them were worn. Some of them were not worn. I know Aerosmith wasn't worn. And I could see the shirt in my head. Bon Jovi, I mean, numerous, numerous concerts, the Kinks. I mean, and what did I do at the storage company while cleaning out my storage container? I knew that I could not take everything with me because I was still living with my in-laws back then, so I could not flood their home with my trinkets. And I just took the storage container, took all the shirts out of the storage container, put them into a black plastic bag and into the dumpster at the storage facility. It's a horror story. No, no, no Mickey Mouse in there, folks. But... I had to sacrifice. Now I could have sold those shirts. I could have wore those shirts. I could have, you know, but again, they were a lot. I'm, I'm talking at least over, I'm talking over 200 shirts. I've been to over 300 plus concerts. So, um, yeah, here is one that happens to be one of my all time, all time favorites. Um, if any child or any younger person, my mom and dad always had music going in the house. They were big music fans, never played any instruments, but they were music fans, which is probably why I like music so much. And I went out with a boyfriend who was, <laughs> who was a guitar player that uh, is, is a musician, but, um, and I married him. Um, I always say that every young person, even though the genre of music that you listen to, you should try and expand yourselves and listen to something completely different out of the ordinary that you wouldn't listen to on your own. <clears throat> um, perfect example would be a parent's music of what they used to listen to. 
Okay. And one of my um, mom and dad's, uh, one of their favorites, and also my husband's favorite was Frank Sinatra. And my husband's Italian, so this thing with the Italians, you know. <laughs> the Italians like Frank, Frank Sinatra, beautiful, beautiful. You know, so um, my husband, back then again, this time fiance, managed to score us two tickets to Frank Sinatra's Diamond Jubilee Tour. I still have my concert ticket stub with this, too. So, old blue eyes himself, yes. And, you know, it was such a, I mean, I always love Frank Sinatra's music anyway, still do, but it was a, such a classy night, and it wasn't just your regular rock concert, you know, T-shirt, jeans-wearing two people. No, this was, you know, you dressed up nice, and, you know, you dressed up classy, and it was awesome. Um, I don't know the age bracket who is watching me, but um, I'm, you know, going to be 57, so even though... Um, I hope to have some more older fans that are um, on my page as well that could relate to this. But um, uh, Steve and Edie, Steve and Edie Gourmet opened up for Frank Sinatra. The comedian, I, I, he can't even be, they, I know they're not even around anymore, which was uh, by the name of Corbett Monica. He was a comedian back then. He was a stand-up comedian comic and he opened up and then Stephen Edie opened and then Frank came out so I mean but you know what class 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 you know I, I always say to a young person you should really experience something completely different out of the box you know try a different genre of music it may not be your music all the time but out of respect for let's say of what your parents liked or something you know show interest in that I and I always did I grew up with it so and I'm still with it you know um, who else? I mean, I got bands here, ACD. And I noticed these, let me tell you something. Let's go to KISS. KISS is 1987-88. Okay. Look at the size of this program. <laughs> Do they even sell concert programs and concerts anymore? I used to, you know, these were, to me, a shirt and or program were the two perfect souvenirs. And they were not that expensive back then. So this concert program is probably like 10 bucks. But look at the size of it. Well, yes, I was a... My husband and I were huge KISS fans also. Look at the size of this thing. Isn't it great? Oh, my God. Look at them. So, and I want to know if this, oh, good, it fits in the bin. <laughs> I was going to say, like, if it didn't fit in the bin, I was going to have a problem. So, like, the ACDC 1988 tour. Yes, I did. See these. I, I saw Aerosmith. I know Aerosmith is here somewhere. I saw Aerosmith quite a few times. Things like that. Um, I saw classics such as Bob Seger. Yes, I did. I saw Bob Seger. So it was it was awesome. Great, great, great. Great Bob Seger band. So very cool. Who else? Who else? White Snake. Ah, very huge White Snake fan. We always were. We saw White Snake quite a few times. Quite a few times. Look at the look. look. Oh, David Coverdale. Who doesn't even look like that anymore he's got night he's now he's got like short hair and so he is a funny guy i follow him on twitter too i mean i said i said to him one day i said i cannot with you he comes out with these these humorous jokes he really has a great sense of humor but um yeah he doesn't look that way anymore <laughs> he now has short hair and married and everything so that's pretty cool rolling stones saw them quite a, quite a few times this is the 1989 tour i'm going back folks i'm going back so, um, what is this? Oh, this is the road crew. This was the stage setup for the Rolling Stones concert tour. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Saw them quite a few times. Quite a few times. David Bowie. God rest his soul. David Bowie. So this, I think it was the Sound and Vision tour. Saw him at um, Giant Stadium. So, God bless him. You know, these are, I mean, these are things, these are awesome things to have, folks. These are all, awesome. this is, this is my memories. These are my, like, I want to pull out all my CDs now and start listening to them just, just as a, just as a memory thing. Clash of the Titans. <laughs> this was a while. I still remember my shirt. I could see my shirt and the shirt, the shirt had this on the cover and the bands were, uh, Seasons in the Abyss. And then you had Megadeth, you had Anthrax, you had a whole bunch on this tour. This was amazing. 
Oh my God. And I even kept, oh, I even kept the news article. All right, this is wild because I didn't even know this. Did I glue this? I must, Jesus, I glued it on. <laughs> yep. Clash, thrash, gash, mash, and bash. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Madison Square Garden, this was held. And um, what was the year on this? Because I'm a little fuzzy on this. Of course, that I don't see the year. I cannot believe I saved this article. You think I would have wrote down the year, but I didn't. Anyhow, it is just amazing. Just, just, just amazing to see these things, really. That was a star studded event. Pink Floyd. Saw Pink Floyd a few times. Great, great band. Great, great band. Saw them also at Giant Stadium. Some awesome, awesome times, folks. Really awesome. Really awesome. Oh, good Lord. Guns and Roses. <laughs> Ooh, I saved the... Oh, this time I stapled the article. I saved the article also to the Guns and Roses concert. So, yeah. Use your illusions tour. Wow. Yep, yep, yep. 1991. Wow. Awesome sauce. Really, really awesome sauce. Just amazing. <laughs> so cool. I like to, I used to like to, you know, save, again, save like the concert reviews. Like I look at the movie reviews now. I, st I used to do the concert reviews also. And this was way before the internet, folks. So I was reading the damn newspaper. Ah, uh, Metallica, 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 Metallica. When the Black Album came out. I don't know if you guys could see that. Hope you guys could see that. <laughs> just cool, just cool. These are my memories, folks. So, did I save any news articles here? No, no, I didn't. Deep Purple, saw them a few times. Love Deep Purple. I know I have some Deep Purple friends and fans out there. I know I do. This is Deep Purple. This is 1991. Saw them at Radio City Music Hall as well. Waited outside for the guitar player, Richie Blackmore. But instead, I met Roger Glover, which is the bass player. So, of course, I was like, oh, you know, and I shook his hand and everything. And I says, he says, hello, darling. I will never forget this. Hello, darling. And me and my husband still kid about that to this day. I said, look, like if I see him on TV, look, it's darling. We, we nicknamed Roger Glover darling. Um, so as I was still holding his hand, and I'll never, I'll ne I'm going to cry. I'll never forget this because I said to him, he says, hello, darling. I said, oh, Roger, hello. Where's Richie? <laughs> Is Richie around? <laughs> he says, oh, no, he's gone already. So which would be Richie Blackmore because he was like, Still around today. He does his Renaissance music. Uh, beautiful wife, two children also. Um, but uh, he does does Renaissance music. And the thing is, is that Richie was never a hang around type person after the concerts or anything. And that's a shame. But, oh my goodness, I saved a little article from here too. Oh, wow, there's Richie. And, uh, yeah. Still kind of looks the same. He's a little bit heavier, wears glasses. Still doing his guitar, you know. So, there he is. And underneath of his Roger Glover, <laughs> Darling, a.k.a. Darling. So you had Joe Lynn Turner on this tour singing. Ian Pace, which is the drummer. Oh, there's her. That's a nice shot of Richie. Nice shot of Richie. So. Oh, am I going to be sitting here? This is going to go down memory lane. Aha. So I was a huge, huge, huge fan of jazz as well. Harry Connick Jr. was... The ultimate. I, I seen this man had to be like 12 times. I also had front row for him by myself at the Beacon Theater in Manhattan, New York. I was in the fan club. In the fan club, when you ordered tickets, you were, you know, you were, um, they used to release tickets from the first 10 rows. I had front row. I remember this because nobody wanted to go with me. Then everybody was pissed off when they found out that I had front row. <laughs> Good old Harry. And I thought I had an article in here. I just I don't. I mean, the man was in his prime. He's still doing. He's still doing his music. Also, he has um, beautiful children. He's still married to his wife Jill. You know, things like this, folks. Things like this. All right. Who else do I have here? Eric Clapton. God bless Eric Clapton. Also, Journeyman Tour. Saw him at Madison Square Garden. Seen him a few times. Ooh, 
Ooh, and there's articles. This one's not attached, though. Ooh. This one's not attached, but there it is. What year is this, folks? 1990. Woo! 1990. So, this is also. This, oh, I used to love the shot of him. I used to love that picture of him. So, looking at it now, I still do it. Like, brings back a lot of memories. Uh, let's see. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. Jimmy Page. I've seen him. I've seen him uh, with Robert Plant, as a matter of fact. And um, Jason Bonham, which is John Bonham's son. There's Jason Bonham. There's Jimmy. So on this tour, Robert Plant, I think Robert Plant opened for Jimmy or Jimmy opened up for Robert Plant. I know it was something like that. I know Plant, Plant and Page. I know that's what it was. But anyway, look how young, young everybody was. Everybody was so young. Everybody was so young. I don't know what year this is either. I should have wrote down the years. This was a wild night because everything is like folded. I see like the crease in this. Look at that. <gasps> I must have bent it in order to stick it in my jacket during the concert. Because, you know, these things are big to lug around. Let's put it that way. Okay. 1989, 1990, Motley Crue saw them quite a few times. Yeah. The Dr. Feelgood tour. I seen him and then I saw the Girls, Girls, Girls tour. So I know I have the Girls, Girls, Girls program here somewhere as well. Oh, my God. Tommy Lee. Who doesn't love Tommy Lee? Tommy Lee's still doing great today, too, you know? So, uh, uh, and then they had the, and then they had the, um, um, farewell tour and then they had a reunion tour again. So it's like, you, you know, these bands, when they say farewell, this should be like a revolving door because once they go out, they come in, they go out, they come in, they, they, they go out, they come. I'm afraid for Kiss now too, because I saw Kiss quite a few times. I saw the reunion tours. When Ace and Peter got back with them, I was there, I think, two nights out of the four nights at Madison Square Garden. My back then fiance, because he wasn't my husband then. And, um, you know, we went and, and it was like, OK, you know, re reunion, this is going to spark a lot of things. And then it kind of like they came out with a, an album, then they came out with another and then it kind of like fizzled out. And then, you know, then they went back to the way they were. And now is the farewell tour this is this is it this is like a fair and i'm going <clears throat> please you had a farewell tour then and you had a reunion you had a farewell then you had a reunion knock it off really knock it off because this is like a money grabbing gouge money gouging thing this is why why i get and i could sit and talk for hours about the bands and about like the music business and a fan like me what i feel about it i am gonna save that for another time folks <laughs> The Monkees, yes, the original Monkees, yes I did. Um, we went to see them at the West Side Pier back in the 80s. My mommy, I coerced my mommy into going to this show. And I think I still have her ticket stub as well. I do still have her ticket stub. And um, God bless because there are two members, well, three members, only two members are here shown, which would be Peter Talk and Davy Jones. God bless them because they are no longer with us. Um, Michael Nesmith was never on this tour. I never got a chance to see Michael Nesmith, all four monkeys on one stage. I never got a chance to do that. And I saw them twice. And, um, so all three of them, Michael Nesmith just passed away, um, last year, I want to say, or the year before. And, um, Davy Jones and Peter Talk, all three of them are, are passed on. But, um, the monkeys still, are still touring. Um, yeah, Mickey Dolan's is doing um the tour so he's got a whole new i guess regime and he's still doing the monkeys music and everything That's, you know what i once people pass away and there is a numerous more people passed away than less people that are actually on that stage i feel that that is not truly truly the the band anymore I'll still remain close to my heart. I still listen to their music. I'm still a fan, but the, I cannot go and see such things like that. Same thing as the group, the Beach Boys. To me, I consider it Beach Boy because the other two guys in the band, to me, were never fully the original. I'm talking about the three brothers. I'm talking about Carl Wilson, Dennis Wilson, and Brian Wilson. To me, those are the three original Beach Boys. You still have Brian Wilson, okay? Dennis passed on, and um, so did Carl Wilson, but... 
to me, the band will never be the same. That's how I look at that. You know, how do you guys feel about it? I still have more programs in here, so I don't know if I'm going to continue showing you. It would be cute. I think I could do a run through. When I mean I got programs, I mean I got programs. Yes, folks, I went to all these concerts. And this is my life. <laughs> And I still have more to go. So maybe I can actually um, make it a part one and a part two of this. Iron Maiden. God bless Iron Maiden. I saw Iron Maiden quite a few times. I know I have more than one program. This was the latest that I saw Iron Maiden. This was the 2016-2017 show. And um, no, I saw Iron Maiden way before, guys. Way before. Leonard Skinner. Saw Leonard Skinner. The reunion tour. And uh, it was beautiful. It really was beautiful. It was in honor of the singer, the original singer. So his brother had taken over, um, continued singing. He's still doing it to this day. And they had a beautiful tribute in honor of the members. You know, I don't know if you remember the story of uh, Leonard Skinner. Uh, they went down in a plane crash, and uh, quite a few band members had passed away. Others had survived the crash, but have uh, kind of trickled off over the years. And um, yeah, it was it's truly a sad thing. So you, you look up Leonard Skinner, you can look up the history of them. Uh, what I think I'm going to do... Brian Adams, 1985. Who doesn't love Brian Adams? So Brian Adams, I've seen him a few times, a few, few times. I know he doesn't look this way anymore, but hey, he still looks this way on my program. <laughs> still looks this way on my concert. I still got the concert in my head. And this was uh, 1985. Saw him at Madison Square Garden. Saw him a few times. I, I think I seen him twice. I saw him for the Z100 radio station Jingle Ball, which is a very big event every year. They still have it to this day. I think I'm going to end this right here because this is like 22 minutes and I know this video is going to take a long time to load. So this is going to be part one. I will continue looking through my um, programs. I will keep those programs up front so this way I know I can get to them, pull it out and get to them and then I can continue my little memory lane of my concerts. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, again, happy Friday. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful 4th of July, everybody. Please be safe out there with the sparklers and the fireworks. I know I was never one for fireworks. I used to do the sparklers. Also, um, wow, when I was a kid, I remember a uh, firecracker. My mother used to like to hang out with like the guys at the pizza shop, the delivery boys. They, they, all, they all love my mother. My mother was like, forget it. Um, <laughs> anyway, she was a cool parent. Um, they were shooting firecrackers and one of them got stuck to her finger. Well, all of them panicked, panicked. It's, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. I mean, you know, so it stuck to her finger. They wanted to take her to the emergency room and it, oh my God, the memories that are popping up today. That's it. So that's a 4th of July memory for you. But anyhow, all right, people, thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I will speak to you soon. God bless. Have a blessed, blessed weekend. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Love to all. Bye-bye.